So uh, now we, are, we have our next session, and our first speaker is Dr. Sri Jain, MP. He, she will, he will speak on safe and healthy connection and bowel anastomosis. Over to Dr. Sri Jain. Uh, bowel leak after uh, any bowel surgery is a uh, surgeon's uh, nightmare. So, sir, will I enlighten us on the uh, safe technique for an anastomosis? Very good morning to all, respected chairpersons, madam, and um, uh, my dear friends. I'm going to talk about bubble anastomosis. The entire intestinal tract is a versatile structure. The structure and function of the intestinal tract, the ingestion, digestion, assimilation, absorption, and excretion is facilitated carefully and it is a perfect mechanism. Occasionally, the intestine gets some disease and surgical extirpation becomes mandatory. And once it is resected, we have to, the surgeon's attempt is to restore the continuity to normalcy or near normalcy. And resection and primary anastomosis is the goal, but it may not be possible in all cases and all the time. Sometimes we will have to delay the anastomosis. The basic principles are really important. The most important factor responsible for a proper healing is good vascularity. And the tension on the anastomosis and the ends of the bowel should not be there. And the lumen has to be adequate and the technique has to be proper. If we stick on to these principles, no anastomosis is going to leak. The orientation can be end to end, that is the best and the normal physiological function is retained and in some of the cases there can be mismatch of the size of the bubble in that case we will have to go for an end to side or a side to side anastomosis the routine techniques are one is sutured anastomosis the other one is stapless the stapled anastomosis the number of stapled anastomosis are increasing day by day and it's very easy to access the, or when there is access difficulty, especially in the rectum and in the gastrointestinal, gastroesophageal junction, staplers are really useful. Otherwise, the sutured anastomosis and the, uh, there is no advantage by doing a stapler. And there are some other newer techniques on an experimental basis it has been performed and some other techniques are being used. One of the compression devices, that is the nickel, and titanium devices are available and biofragmentable anastomotic rings are available, polyglycolic acid and the barium sulfate coated things. But these are not routinely used and I don't know whether any surgeon is using it, uh, it in India. Uh, but experimental basis, there are many papers showing that these things are useful. And tissue glue is another one. Tissue glue is generally used, in, uh, used to close the skin but in intestine, I don't know whether somebody is using. There are experimental basis, papers are there regarding these things also. And the next is a magnemosis, magnetic compression devices are available. Again, in human being, it's not tried. This is an interesting slide. The ischemia, when we close the, or when we do an anastomosis with the interrupted sutures is around 10%. And with a continuous suture, it can amount to 25%. But with a stapler, 
the ischemia developing at that site is around 40%. But even with that 40% ischemia developing at the anastomotic site, the anastomosis survives if the vascularity is extremely good. When we consider sutured anastomosis, there are different techniques, different materials, a lot of variations are there. Interrupted sutures can be used, continuous sutures can be used, monofilament or braided material can be used, single layer or double layer, extra mucosal or whole layer. And size of the sutures, a standard 3-0 materials are used. And the other Lambert's corner and Cushing suturing techniques are practiced. And one important aspect is that the, when we anastomose the small bubble and large bubble, the anti-mesenteric border is the area where there is less blood supply or the most ischemic segment is the anti-mesenteric border. When you see this slide, you can see the small vessels, vasorecti, running towards the anti-mesenteric border. If you anastomose intestine, another intestine to the closer area of the mesenteric area, the mesenteric segment gets good vascularity. But the anastomotic site of the anti-mesenteric border gets less blood supply and the blood has to travel from the opposite side. It should cross the anti-mesenteric border and then it should come to the mesenteric side. So ischemia will be more when we anastomose it to one side of the bubble. So all anastomosis should be kept at the anti-mesenteric border. A continuous and interrupted anastomosis has been, or all these techniques are used by all of us, but the continuous anastomosis, I was talking about the ischemia which develops at that area, it is around 25%. And we need a watertight anastomosis. And Continuous is less time consuming, probably difference of few minutes. Hemostasis is perfect. But the problem is blood flow is low there and the perianastomotic oxygen tension becomes low. An entire suture line is based on one stitch. And the sutures commonly used for intestinal anastomosis are polyglactin, poly glycolic acid, PDS and silk. In suture pattern, a position of the intestinal edges should be there. And inversion is the technique. Eversion is not fully recommended. Inversion is the rule. And mucosal approximation or a position occurs in 24 to 48 hours. So excessive inversion can produce the narrowing of the lumen. So currently, inverted anastomosis is the most widely accepted techniques worldwide. And the comparison of a single layer and the two layer anastomosis are performed. And the seven RCTs were there, 408 patients in the single, uh, sim single layer sutures and 432 in the double layer. But what, what have been found is that there is no definite advantage of one over the other. And the complication rates are all same. The only thing which is significantly mentioned is the less time used for single layer anastomosis. Again, hands and versus stapled, and there was no difference in the complications. hands and versus stapled anastomosis, nine, R nine RCTs were compared, the 622 stapled and 611 hands -Yuan. The complication rates were almost same. Prevention of complications, definitely preoperative pre optimization of the patient's medical condition and correction of malnutrition, especially albumin, prevention of hypothermia and hypovolemia during surgery, and fluid loss correction, all these things are done, performed. And antibiotic prophylaxis, nasogastric tube, urinary catheter, mechanical bowel preparation. There are a lot of controversies regarding mechanical bowel preparation, venous thromboembolism prophylaxis, all these things are practiced. And coming to specific areas, in esophageal anastomosis, there are two problems at this site. One is leak. Leak is general, but leak in the esophageal area and stricture. These are the two problems which we come across at that area. The leak can be prevented by holding the basic principles correct. Good vascularity, no tension, adequate lumen. All these things should be 
kept in mind. And the stricture can be prevented by a wide anastomosis. If you do an end-to-end -end anastomosis, the chance for stricture is high. So a wide anastomosis using a posterior stapler anterior suturing or posterior and anterior stapler gives a wide room and it will prevent uh, stricture. When it comes to iliocolic, the problem is mismatch of the size. So probably additional techniques can be used to match the lumen or an end to side or a, or a side to side anastomosis can be performed. And colorectal, we will know that because of the uh, advent of staplers, we are able to do even very low rectal anastomosis. And this is an important thing, matrix metalloproteinase. If this is present in the anastomotic site, this is actually an enzyme which will lyse the collagen and the elastin. Collagenolysis and elastinolysis is a problem and one of the most important reasons for anastomotic failure is the presence of or increase in the matrix metalloproteinase at the anastomotic site. Leak test and ICG. The integrity of the anastomosis is tested by leak, leak test. But I think the medical legal thing can be considered at this point. We can confirm that there is no leak at the time of anastomosis, but it doesn't guarantee that it is not going to leak after four or five days. So the surgeon factors are there, the patient factors are there. So leak tests can be performed and we can uh, legally say that at the time of closure of the anastomosis, everything was all right and later the patient developed leak and it's not due to surgeon's fault. Probably ICG is a better tool. ICG, if the ICG shows that vascularity is not very good at the anastomotic side, we can always revise at the point itself. And we have few challenges. One is when we resect a segment of the bowel, probably we can mobilize the segment and anastomose it end to end. But there is only one area where we cannot mobilize and connect end to end, that is the area of esophagus. In all other areas, we will be able to mobilize and connect it. And the second thing is, sometimes we won't be able to mobilize and connect. In that case, we can use a pedicle graft so that both edges can be connected. And the third point is, when we are not able to take a pedicle graft, we will be able to take a graft and the anastomo vascular anastomosis can be performed at the level where we are going to anastomose. And in long segment resections, especially large area of bowel is resected, sometimes it results into short bowel syndrome. And for the patient, it's going to a trouble, but we will be able to come out by doing an anastomosis there. And a size mismatch, it can be a small size mismatch or a large size mismatch. The small size mismatch of the, uh, the intestine can be adjusted with a differential suturing. On one side, we can take a bite with a short distance and on the other side, we can take a bit more distance and so that we can adjust the lumen. That is the differential suturing. And Chittil's maneuver we perform in many, many situations and an oblique division also will help us to connect the bowel without much of a problem. If that is not possible, then the option is side-to-side -side anastomosis and end-to-side anastomosis. Ischemic bowel is another, another issue, and in that case we may not be able to uh, come out by making a definite safe anastomosis. In that case, we will have to resect, a, resect the bowel and a second look might be required. And in emergency situations, especially patients presenting with uh, colorectal malignancies as intestinal obstruction, the bowel is edematous. Uh, there will be size mismatch and the tissue can be friable and fecal contamination also will be there. In that case, it is always better that we delay the anastomosis, we resect it and we delay the anastomosis. And use of staplers are not recommended in such situations. Nasogastric tube and drain. Nasogastric tube actually we, we can decompress the intestine mainly by keeping, uh, by keeping the nasogastric tube we can aspirate the air which is swallowed by the patient so that further transmission of the 
uh, air towards the distal part can be prevented. That is the main advantage. And drain thing in, if the dissection is not too much, drain is actually not required. To conclude, anastomosis must be tension free with good vascularity, adequate lumen and the technique has to be good and the physiological principle has to be kept in mind. A hand in hand anastomosis is not inferior to stapler and staplers takes less time and there is no objective variations. And no difference in complication rates between single layer and double layer techniques or between continuous and interrupted anastomosis or suture by stapler is found. It is always best to learn the technique and when and the technique with which we anastomose but at the same time it is very important to know when not to, not to do an anastomosis. Thank you very much.